Okay. Um, I think that um, the people who have not uh, joined us yet, they will just come in uh, along the way. So I think we will um, um, start the presentation now. And um, I will um, start um, by telling uh, you who uh, I am. I would um, like to welcome you together with Milena, who will uh, present herself um, after me. I'm Ingrid, and I work in Mimir. Mimir is a um, um, Norwegian uh, tourism advisor, uh, advisors consultancy, and we have been working with Norwegian destinations and regions for uh, almost 25 years. Next year is the 25th jubilee year um, and we uh, have been working um, all over Norway uh, and also uh, in our um, in, in Finland and Sweden also together in different international uh, projects. Um, we, uh, we are five uh, advisors, a designer and a researcher. So we, um, we are involved in uh, a lot of um, interesting uh, projects around Norway, uh, working a lot about the, in the sustainability field uh, the last years, and we are also um, certified by Innovation Norway to um, be um, supervisors for this sustainability um, destination label that we have in Norway. So um, I'm very um, I'm looking very much forward to this webinar uh, together with Milena. Please, Milena, can you uh, tell us? Sure. Thank you, Ingrid. Um, welcome to today's webinar and thank you for having me. It's such a pleasure to uh, to join you today. So a little bit about me, if you uh, missed the previous webinars. Um, I am researcher and uh, expert in the area of uh, behavioral economics specific to the travel industry. What that means is that I'm passionate about using insights from psychology, sociology and other behavioral sciences to analyze and uh, resolve challenges, complex challenges uh, in uh, both in commercial and sustainability context in our industry. Um, other than that, I have uh, about 20 years of experience working in uh, countries and with private sector uh, across uh, four continents on variety of projects looking to develop or strengthen sustainable tourism. So I have the pleasure of uh, hopefully setting the context uh, in a good way to today's, uh, uh, to today's webinar. Um, we want to keep uh, the spirit and the topic and the content today positive, but there's no way to, uh, to miss mentioning the fact that we live in uh, some sort of insanity today. Um, there's no question that uh, these are unusual times to use mild description, especially when it comes to, uh, to our industry. Um, but there's some positive uh, aspects to that. And I would like to uh, set the context by focusing on that. One of the effects of the crisis that we're experiencing today is that it really became obvious how significant and important our sector is, both for economy, from uh, economic perspective, but also for societies. So let's watch a short video that I hope will inspire us for uh, the rest of the discussion today. What is travel? Travel is a community. It is a collection of unparalleled experiences. It is everything from breathtaking natural wonders to sensory discovery, cultural exploration to incredible encounters with incredible people. Travel connects us. It challenges us. It is total relaxation to pure adrenaline. It is shared time to solo adventure. Travel gives us lifelong memories and the most amazing stories to tell. We cannot travel right now, 
our health and safety is paramount. But even when we have to stay apart, travel can still bring us closer. So, from homes all around the world, let's keep the spark alive together. Join us as we gather together in travel and celebrate what travel means to each of us. Share your stories, your most prized memories, or greatest adventures. Your favorite images, videos, or the songs you've heard. Inspire and help others. Fuel their bucket lists and let them grow yours. Make us laugh or cry. Make our jaws drop or eyes widen. Let us support one another in this time. Keep the flame of travel burning and wanderlust alive. Because travel is a community. And that is how communities thrive. Wow, I don't know about you, but uh, this this video really makes me emotional and reminds me of of the mission that we have uh, in our industry. It's a, um, it's a piece that if you haven't watched and you are not familiar with it, uh, it's a piece that WTTC uh, developed and launched as uh, uh, as a way to gather together and to focus on the positive uh, or the silver lining of uh, of this crisis. And uh, actually, that's what I want to uh, to talk about right now. I know that in crisis, especially such a profound one uh, as the one that we are uh, dealing with today, it's very difficult to see the positive, to see the silver lining. But there is. We are a very resilient industry. Um, and so the fact, uh, the fact is that there's more evidence about the importance uh, of the sector. Tourism can uh, also play a very big and important role in the recovery. And I'm saying that from a behavioral sense. Think about it. We are, a very, we are very much a happiness industry. People are happy when they travel, when they experience new places. Part of the reasons that so many people um, are uncomfortable today is because they cannot uh, be on the road, because they cannot connect with new people, with new places. So in that sense, we can play a very important role and in many ways have the responsibility to do so in the recovery of our societies and the restoration of travelers, of people. We can help restore happiness and well-being after the global trauma that our travelers are experiencing. And a good way to do that is to use behavior smart thinking that helps us understand how travelers think, what they will want, how they will uh, seek to connect with you, uh, with the places uh, that uh, where we are hosting them. So hopefully with the content today, we will help you prepare for this and see the positive uh, and see the silver lining. So now I will transfer again to Ingrid so that you can take us through the first part of the content for today. Yes. So as Milena said, that uh, we will uh, respect the, the unique times, but we will, together with you, uh, focus and look for the silver lining. And these, as you know, um, the Visit Arctic Europe had an ambition that uh, 2020 should be the make it happen year uh, regarding sustainability. And uh, it was planned out uh, to have three <clears throat> uh, webinars on sustainability work in tourism. Um, uh, I had hold the first one, the 4th of February, uh, with learnings from Norway. And then Milena had the uh, second, Friday, the 14th of February, on smart ways, nudging, nudging for sustainability. And the plan was, as you can see on the slide, to have the third and uh, the last one on Tuesday, the 17th of March. Uh, on focusing, this is how we do it. Today, it's 28th of April, and a lot of things has happened since the original date of the third seminar, and we will try to still focus on practical, constructive, relevant 
um, issues and good examples for you. But of course, this will be uh, different than um, the one we were planning for the 17th of March due to the, the, the situations. Um, and um, we would first, before we go uh, into the agenda, we would like to know uh, from you guys if you, um, uh, if you um, have listened to the, the other two seminars, then we know how much you have have of the background uh, um, background information. So we would like to see if we can get the um, things to work. A small survey, if you can uh, answer uh, one question, give um, give your answer, and then we will see if um, you. Um, uh, Let's see. Can you see a survey now? Where we ask you, did you attend the other webinars on sustainability? Uh, the first one, the second one, both or none? So please uh, type your answer. And if you uh, joined us uh, live on the webinars, or if you have uh, seen them uh, um, recorded from the uh, Visit Arctic Europe's um, uh, project information on the, um, okay, um, okay, thank you, okay, for, yeah, um, we have nine attendees, and now six of you have answered the three last one. Can you please, um, yeah, we wait a bit more than we see. Yeah, hi, the last one, did you join us on the, have you seen some of the webinars before? Okay, then we see we don't have more. So, um, can you see the results now, everyone? Also, yeah. So we can see that uh, one of you joined the first one. Uh, one of you have seen both of them, and five of you haven't been together with us, but that's no problem. And uh, we will share with you afterwards the links to the previous webinars, so you can always go back and get more um, uh, knowledge from that. Let's see. Uh, stop. Let's see. We'll go, go back to the presentation. Yeah. There we are. So um, today's focus uh, will be in three um, sectors in a way. We would uh, like to start with a short recap from the first and the second webinar where we uh, reuse the knowledge and uh, take with us um, some of that into the second part where we will introduce some new logic, uh, new uh, knowledge for new times with you and give you some practical step-by-step -step guidance on how to work with uh, sustainability right now. And in the third um, and the last uh, section, we will um, give you uh, um, some um, tools uh, to uh, turn the knowledge, both the knowledge from before and the new from this webinar, into action. Because uh, uh, we uh, think that it's um, there are so strange times, so much uncertainty, but still there is very motivating and it's very important to, to work with some uh, to, to choose some issues and work action-oriented uh, on these ones. So that we will um, 
try to help you with and uh, give you some tools and solutions for, for that. So that will be our focus of today. Um, we have two hours. Uh, we will, um, Milena will do some of the uh, speaking. I will do some of the speaking. So we'll try to make it a good, good, uh, good um, shared uh, webinar. We will give you some small breaks um, and we will uh, ask you to please use the chat uh, when we are speaking. Now, when I will speak, Milena will uh, look at the chat and try to answer or to sum up some of the questions before the breaks. And uh, we will also uh, stop the presentation and, and have uh, to, to ask you to, to um, answer some questions that we, we um, uh, give you. Do you have any questions now for the practical and the agenda and so forth? Please give them in the chat. No. And we continue. So the, the first webinar um, where I um, um, spoke, it was to take some learnings from Norway. And um, as I said then, it's not that uh, Sweden and Finland uh, is not working uh, great on sustainability and sustainability in tourism, but Norway um we we were kind of an early bird in this uh, um, systematic uh, work on sustain sustainability and i gave some examples uh, from that in the first webinar about norway um, taking sustainability tourism in our national tourism strategies uh, from 2007 and we started in 2010 to work on this label for sustainable destination that we now have uh, in, in, in Norway and um, so that was kind of an early um, early uh, an early system an early label for destinations not not companies a lot of you have certification uh, for companies, but this was focusing on the uh, tourist destination. And then, as uh, you know, that in um, 2015, the sustainability targets towards 2030 was raised from, from UN. And uh, in 2017, it was the UNCA for sustainable tourism. So in a way, Norway, started to work very systematically on this uh, some years before that. And uh, we are still um, trying to take some more steps where the st sustainability uh, focus is coming more and more into uh, the tourism strategies. And through the first webinar, uh, we looked at the results from the survey that was held uh, uh, in Visit Arctic Europe uh, members uh, in, in, in June, July, the last summer. Uh, there were uh, 90 of um, 120 companies in the Visit Arctic Europe project that uh, answered this survey and um, it was about 10 subjects for working with sustainability. You were asked to rank what is the most important for us, where do we want to uh, work. We, uh, the, we were, you were asked to point out the, uh, the three sustainability subjects was most important uh, for you uh, last summer when the when we asked and the results as you can see on the slides it was 
big differences between the three countries, but still there were um, um, some things that were, of course, uh, um, very similar. And I will now go through these um, six uh, subjects quickly to refresh, because we will take that into the new knowledge. This is what you have been working on, I hope, uh, since uh, you said that uh, the, um, last summer. And now we will use this webinar to to help you to how to work on these issues and some of these issues in the new uh, situation we have. Um, so the first one uh, that uh, most of you said is um, the most important to work on is to buy as much as possible locally. Uh, and as you can see from the slide, uh, food how is one what important thing that you emphasize. Uh, how can uh, we as a tourism uh, company, tourism destination, uh, buy and use more uh, locally food? How can you uh, get the supplies, the regula uh, regulation, uh, how can you make uh, new distribution and, and, and especially for food, but also, of course, uh, for guides, local guides, local services, that tourism is a bigger part of the local community and that a bigger part of the, the income will go back to the local community. So this is something that you were very uh, eager to work more on. And then, of course, um, there's uh, the nature as the second subject. Um, how can you... Uh, via your companies, the destination, the communities, reduce the impact on the nature and on the environment. Um, you know, in Norway, um, we had uh, discussions, uh, the minister of, um, uh, we don't have a minister of tourism, but the, the, uh, the um, minister for uh, trade, invited to a seminar, some of the destinations in Norway in the end of February, focusing on over tourism, that there are some parts uh, in Norway, some destination uh, in some periods that have problems with uh, too many tourists uh, using the, the, the nature and it's not um, managed right and these discussions were quite um, yeah central in in, in norway uh, just some months ago and today there are no one at these places uh, so so the the world is really changing but they will come back so uh, one thing that you uh, told in the survey is that it's really important for you to work both on the information side, on the infrastructure, on new technology, and to, re to really reduce the impact on nature and environment. The, thir uh, the third uh, subject that you fo uh, focused on in the survey is about the local culture, identity, and traditions, people, um, and, and uh, using the, the local uh, resources by the people, by the culture, uh, and involve also uh, more of the, the, the local, the local who meet the locals program and, uh, and, 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 and put that more into the tourism project by storytelling, by uh, hosting programs, and these kind of uh, uh, work. So, um, 
that is the third one that you focused on. The, uh, the fourth was about the season development. A bit difference here between how you prior how the pro uh, priority is between Sweden and Norway and Finland. So in Norway, that I know the best, this is a really uh, important issue uh, for the sustainability of travel and, and tourism at the destinations regions in Norway uh, uh, to to um, get more spread out of the visitors and so people can have their work the whole year through uh, to have um, economy to have uh, safe uh, uh, and, and robust uh, companies because there are uh, a lot of companies that close down in different seasons and really struggle to get the, the economy through the year so this was one of uh, uh, the most important for, for, for Norway and also Finland, but in Sweden, you, you in north of Sweden, then you have made the Santa Claus and uh, all year around. So you, you you don't you're not so um, uh, you didn't prioritize that so much. And uh, the fifth one is about the energy and resource efficiency, and of course this. Uh, is a um, subject where it's all we can think it's good for the, the, the environment, but also I gave you some example uh, in the first webinar about the the uh, the purse also for the the money of the companies because a lot of these investments in in improving the energy and resource efficiency uh, will also help you to cut costs. So this is a subject that also um, a lot, um, the Swedes, they put that very uh, high up on their, their um, list. Uh, also maybe something to doing about the cost of energy in Sweden compared to, to Norway and Finland. I don't know. But the, the, this was um, important for a lot of the Swedish companies. And then the, the, the sixth um, subject that uh, we recap on is the one uh, about profitability and innovation. Uh, to get more sustainable, you answered that you need to look into new products, new seasons, uh, new um, corporations, and also how to, to uh, market your destinations and product uh, more uh, innovative and also to give, um, give the length of the stay uh, longer and uh, the, the, the prof to make more money in your, in your purses. So these were the six uh, different um, subjects that you answered uh, in last summer and I would like to get some reflections from you on how was the job going on regarding the three subjects you chose until March and do you think that uh, of course, the corona situation has affected the progress, but, but in uh, what way uh, did it affect the work that you were um, uh, 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 the work you were going on with until March, the subjects you had chosen for your company or your uh, destination. So please, can you give some reflections on that in the chat mm -hmm. 
no one, have, um, no reflections, Mimi, you're typing now. Taking a while, I don't know. I can see that some are writing, but I can't really get it up. So we will give a couple of more minutes. You want to, yeah, but that's given us time to work on. Uh, yeah, Nina is writing. The corona situation has given us time to work on sustainability and made us think more of it here locally too. Great input, Nina, because uh, time we have, a lot of us, we have in a way more time as a resource now. So that is good uh, that you have used it and also reflecting on it, because we discuss a lot in, in Norway now that, uh, yes, we of course want to get the uh, tourism back, but do we want to get every part of it back? Or are there some parts of it that we will try to to, to rise again and some that we will not be so eager to get back on the same level that we had it. So that is good, Mina, that you are um, thinking about it um, also locally in your uh, destination. Um, Milena, do you have any comments on that before I give the slides over to you? I can't see that anyone is sharing, so please do that while we go further on in the webinar. No, I, um, as, as you know, later in the talk, I will also uh, talk about the current situation as an opportunity to uh, revisit sustainability practices. And actually, this is one of the expectations that travelers after the crisis will have. So it's not only a, a good thing to do, it's actually a business smart thing to do. So hopefully most of the ecosystems that we have in, in the region will actually pursue that. I think that you will, we, we, we have that with us, the reflection, so maybe we can discuss it also later on when you had uh, um, some of your um, input, Milena. So, of course. Yeah, so of please, course. I invite you to um, do your short recap. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Okay, so thank you, Ingrid. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I would like to use today to share, uh, to, to use the time today to share with you some insights about the behavior of travelers that we expect uh, we will see after the crisis ends. Before I do that, of course, I would like to remind you a little bit uh, about the key takeaways that um, uh, we concluded uh, our last seminar, uh, our last webinar with. So, first, last time we established that many systems in our societies, including in our own industry, are designed around behavioral assumptions which are not very realistic. Secondly, the elements, we established that the elements, format of information and the context in which information is presented can really have very powerful impact on the perceptions and decisions of travelers, as well as actually on the decisions and behavior of uh, tourism professionals. Third, behavior smart adjustments uh, can produce powerful effects involving um, uh, involving the uh, improving the success um, in sorry here. Yeah. 
Yeah, Sorry, I forgot yeah. to move the, yeah, the slide. Sorry about that. Uh, to produce the powerful effects, uh, improving success both in business practices uh, as well as uh, footprint management. And we saw some examples of that. Fourth, um, especially now, uh, with a little bit more time uh, on our hands, we have the opportunity to benefit from behavior smart thinking and achieve more with less. If you remember uh, from our webinar last time, um, or if you don't, I encourage you to go back and, and listen to the recording. Uh, there's some interesting examples that show how with some little adjustments or some uh, mild nudging, we can really achieve a lot of uh, uh, powerful impacts, which are worth uh, pursuing. And fourth, one of the things that we established last time during the webinar uh, discussions is that uh, effective behavioral tactics require experimentation and testing, and that there's a, um, a serious ethical implication that needs to be considered uh, every time we uh, use behavior smart thinking. Okay. So we talked about behavior and how important it is to understand it and to use it in, this, uh, in the design of commercial and sustainability tactics. And at the time when we connected, we were very far from the realities we are in today. So today, just a few weeks later, the events around us have actually uh, served as additional evidence about how important is human behavior. And in this case, how it can determine the success of managing a crisis like the one that we are dealing with now. So there's no question that people are at the center of everything in our societies. But this is really, really important also for, uh, for our industry. And it makes sense to use uh, the lens, uh, the behavioral lens, the behavior smart lens, uh, for uh, development and growth. As I shared with you, uh, or as, as we started uh, at the beginning, we live in unusual times. But we also have an opportunity to take a look at some of the failures that we have made in the way that we have grown tourism uh, and improve the way that we do business. This is not only because this is needed or because it's the right thing, rather, but because this will be at the core of the thinking and feeling of our travelers and our host communities. So it will be our responsibility to use this time to make it happen, to return to a balanced tourism business. After the break, I will uh, share with you some trends that showcase how sustainability will be very important in the behavior of travelers after the crisis and how it will be weaved in uh, their desires and expectations. So we will take a five minute break now, uh, which, uh, so we will return at 1047, correct Ingrid? That's correct for my, um, okay. yeah. Um, okay. And please, if you will also use the time to share some reflections while you're uh, filling up the coffee, uh, use the chat.
Hello again, Milena. Hello. Hello. I have my coffee. Yeah. <laughs> I have my um, um, Finnish movie. Uh, oh, uh, yes. Movie. Yes. What was the name? Um, what was the name? The, on the movie? Mm -hmm. uh, on this one? I don't know. I have to... I can't see under. Oh. Uh, maybe some of our um, friends from Finland can help me on this one. Ah, it was with an M uh, last time when I was in uh, in Helsinki. Mumi. Yeah, Mumi, but Mumi, but, yeah, Mumi, But this is um, they have all different names. But ah, uh, uh, yeah, I don't. I'm not that proficient. Oh, oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, you. I have a hard time reading that. <laughs> But when I was um, uh, when I was in Helsinki for uh, uh, for a conference in December, I bought the, uh, some of the books for my kids and brought yeah. them. It's so really it's a, yeah yeah okay. Yeah, we can start again. Should we start? Yeah. Okay, brilliant. Let me move my slides. All right, fantastic. So, as I mentioned before the break, uh, I have been working on, on an analysis of, of the changes that we are likely to see as a result of the crisis, uh, of the COVID-19 crisis. Um, I have extracted a few of the insights that I've been working on to share here uh, with you, as I think that they're very relevant to the sustain sustainability priorities in the project that uh, uh, Ingrid summarized earlier. I hope that uh, in addition to confirming the importance of staying on track with sustainability efforts, they will also help you um, with some decision making and initiatives as you uh, prepare for the restoration of the market and for the uh, strengthening of uh, the sustainability element in your operations. Um, before uh, before I actually start talking about uh, the, the uh, behavioral characteristics themselves, I want to just uh, say a few words about how uh, I am generating these uh, insights. My work includes a review of series of uh, uh, scientific and research resources that focus on um, uh, human behavior in crisis, uh, expected changes in uh, consumption patterns overall, uh, impact the impact of COVID-19 on societies and so on. And part of these uh, insights that I have synthesized here for you are also shaped by the interviews that uh, uh, I have held with different members of the industry uh, ecosystem. 
So let's start. I will present you today with seven characteristics of the post-COVID-19 uh, traveler. The first one relates unsurprisingly to hygiene. What we expect is that uh, the attitude towards hygiene will be radically different after the crisis and it will be perceived as absolutely non-negotiable. So anything from a food store like the one that you see here on the uh, photo to a museum, accommodation facility will be assessed through the prism of uh, uh, cleanliness. We have already seen at the start of the crisis airlines that emphasize on hygiene procedures in their communications uh, when there were still travelers and they were still attempting to, uh, to um, ensure uh, that uh, they're being taken care of. The expectation is that most operations along the entire value chain will have to maintain different levels of uh, uh, cleanliness and also make sure that they clearly demonstrate that um, in their communication. So. What are the three uh, different um, uh, characteristics or changes in traveler behavior that uh, we can see when it comes to hygiene? First, uh, as I mentioned, the expectation of our clients will be very different uh, when it comes to hygiene. Um, so that will apply to all elements of the service, to facility design, to the entire experience really during uh, a holiday. Travelers will expect that uh, operators are committed to new standards and that they will communicate about the actions that they are taking so that they can convince them uh, to feel safe and taken care of. We expect that a lot of accommodations, restaurants and other service providers will begin including information about their cleanliness procedures in their standard communication. Second, um, another thing that relates to uh, hygiene and pro the, protect the new protection culture is that we expect to see a new popularity of new travel accessories, which can easily become branded souvenirs with destination brands or service provider uh, logos. These can be protective masks, glasses, gloves, and others. So this gives us some space for uh, creativity and fun adaptation, so to say. The third important trend that uh, I have uh, extracted here for you is that we expect to see a new demand for formalized hygiene standards and certification systems. Um, some of these exist in, uh, in Asia, um, but uh, it might be that destinations also uh, in Europe and uh, in our region will start seeing the need to develop their own standards that will be followed by all members of the local industry or that new certification systems will begin guaranteeing that there's certain levels of hygiene that um, uh, are demanded by travelers. So th these are uh, things to look out for. Okay, the second um, characteristic of the, um, of the traveler uh, after the crisis will be the uh, impact, will be shaped by the impact of social distancing, of the social distancing uh, phenomena. So as a result of that, um, travelers will experience uh, sort of a conflict uh, between the desire to reconnect with close ones and to compensate for the lost time on one end and um, to uh, stay away from crowds. So there will be sort of a conflict between that desire to socialize with your close one and the desire to really stay away and avoid uh, um, uh, big uh, gatherings of people that you don't know. So we expect that this will give a rise to demand for uh, experiences that are in small groups, allowing for interaction with your close one, with your friends, with your family members. Uh, but um, uh, the experiences that place you uh, in contact with many different people that you don't know will probably have a, um, a slower recovery, if, um, if any. In this context, we think that the isolation and anxiety from the current crisis will also fuel the demand for stress relieving and rejuvenating experiences in nature, which of course for uh, our region is uh, great news. We feel and hope that the crisis will fuel new demand for uh, the powerful and uh, uh, wellness benefit that nature offers, especially such that again are shared with uh, your favorite people. So in that context, um, active and uh, uh, nature-based based activities will be uh, demanded after the crisis. So 
what are the uh, three possible uh, effects that this um, trend will have on traveler behavior? First, there will be growing demand for small group journeys and experiences that are shared with family members and friends. We expect that the fear from crowds will probably remain for a longer period of time and will likely impact formats that involve interactions with uh, larger groups. Second, as a result of the current dynamics, travelers will expect destinations and operators to take effective measures uh, that avoid crowding regardless of what the cost might be. So this is certainly something to, to think about now and uh, possibly address. Uh, during this lower period. Third, uh, the expectation is that there will be growing demand for off-the-beaten-path experiences that allow for socializing, uh, that do not uh, involve crowds, and that give an opportunity for uh, reconnection with, uh, with nature. Third, I would like to share um, that uh, the expectation that um, care will become a key element of uh, service in the future. These unusual times of fear, life loss, uh, unusual isolation have unlocked unprecedented levels of, of social care uh, and empathy. Brands behave as responsible members of society. Companies are repurposing services, products and spaces. Communities are help helping members in need. This spirit of empathy and care is appreciated and the expectation is that consumers, travelers, will continue to expect that after the, uh, the end of the crisis uh, as well. Many brands are behaving as responsible members of the society, as, uh, uh, as I mentioned, demonstrating care for people uh, beyond their own uh, customer base. So in many ways, social distancing has translated to physical distancing, but social closeness, closeness uh, in which the average consumer is experiencing the same as the leading brands, the leading celebrities. These closeness and care for each other is something that we expect will remain and will be expected uh, after the crisis. So brands, whether um, they are airlines, hotels, operators or destinations, will not be able to reverse the relationship they are building now as members of the society. And um, so they will need to find the best ways to continue acting as good citizens. Uh, and um, I personally am very curious to see how this will play out in, uh, in our industry. Okay, so um, so um, this comfort with care for each other is ex expected to trigger two possible effects on traveler behavior. The first one is the growing expectations that service providers will continue to care and be empathetic to customers. Travelers will be looking for display of similar support and care beyond the crisis, uh, and that will be part of the new normal. Similarly, once companies and brands have acted as good citizens, they cannot roll back um, into their shells. So the expectation of, that the traveler will have uh, is that um, uh, every citizen will continue seeing brands to behave as good citizens and uh, uh, to continue setting uh, possible desired uh, social norms. And this, of course, relates to uh, the different aspects of uh, sustainability. So the fourth point relates to value. Previous crises ha that have involved an economic downturn have increased the demand for value in market exchanges. And we expect um, that uh, this will be very distinct in our uh, industry when it recovers. I want to, um, to make sure, I want to clarify that the pursuit for value is not the same as pursuit for low price. On the contrary, if the traveler or their families are not impacted by unemployment or, um, or other economic hardship, they will still pursue higher end experiences. They will still go for um, the add-on, but they will be ready to uh, pay this above average price tag if they're convinced that they're uh, getting uh, a value that is impactful and uh, highly desired by them. So they will simply demand the value that they receive 
to be significant and obvious. This means that both destinations and service providers need to ensure that their value proposition is clearly spelled out in all its dimensions. The traveler needs to feel the benefits they're extracting from a traveler experience, such as emotion, rejuvenation, status, luxury, all of these intangible elements. Um, and uh, to feel that all of them are cumulatively more valuable than the monetary price that they're paying. Um, and this in our industry is especially, especially challenging because the experience is intangible and because it's so difficult sometimes to really describe all of the elements of the, uh, or all of the benefits that the traveler will extract uh, from the experience. So what are the two possible uh, effects on traveler behavior uh, on that point of uh, extra focus on value. The first is that travelers will be looking for information and descriptions that reveals in much stronger ways the value proposition of uh, the value potential, rather, uh, of any experience in advance. How well values are communicated and the extent to which they're relevant for the traveler will determine how favorable the price, ta price tag is perceived. This lower time is uh, yet another opportunity to take a look at that and ensure that the value, whether it's uh, for a destination uh, or for company level offerings is clearly communicated and is really generous uh, to the reality of the benefits that uh, it offers. Another aspect of the new normal um, is the increased sensitivity toward, uh, towards wellness and uh, well-being. What does that mean? Here's some evidence on how this is starting to impact um, uh, commercial offerings. A good illustration comes from the well-known coffee company Starbucks, um, who uh, very recently partnered with uh, Nestle and launched uh, what they call coffee with more. Uh, and that's actually a series of uh, coffee um, blends that uh, are designed to promote well-being and that have additional elements such as essential uh, vitamins or the so popular in the US uh, golden turmeric, uh, which all um, uh, enhance well-being and uh, physical, uh, physical condition. <clears throat> Another piece of evidence comes from our industry. The hotel chain Hyatt entered in partnership with one of the leading um, meditation apps called uh, Headspace uh, to offer mindfulness exercises, meditation, sleep content, and so on, not only to guests, but also to its own employees. So staff are receiving complimentary subscriptions and all guests are able to access um, the Headspace content when uh, they're in their uh, rooms at the hotel. Uh, corporate <clears throat> corporate events clients are also benefiting from this uh, as uh, uh, organizers that host events at Hyatt properties can uh, also integrate Headspace content into their uh, planning and their uh, event experience. So what does that mean for uh, traveler behavior? First, travelers will also be very sensitive to wellness and will expect wellness to be at the core of offerings and even uh, in the longer run of space design. Destinations and service providers, therefore, will be expected to reinvent offerings or adjust them so that wellness uh, is actually considered um, and uh, so that that's communicated clearly. Mindfulness and wellness can be powerful platforms for visitor engagement and experience design. So not only will that be um, responding or adjusting an offering, um, it's actually they uh, can actually become platforms for uh, innovative, smart uh, design of uh, experiences and uh, engagement. The sixth point I would like to share today is on sustainability. The crisis has elevated the dialogue on the importance of uh, sustainability, both because it gives us time to think about it and also because there's uh, um, um, increasing uh, um, a number of discussions that link the spread of the virus with uh, sustainability uh, failures. So that said, 
uh, while sustainability will be expected, it must be designed in a way that makes it uh, fun and um, easy to follow. And here are some examples and illustrations of how this trend is beginning to materialize. The first piece of evidence um, that there's growing demand for uh, such um, fun and easy to follow sustainability comes from a platform called Earth Offset. Uh, what this platform does is offer carbon neutralization of the life of subscribers. So what you can do, what you do is you pay uh, one of the three uh, different fee levels, um, which are minimal, and the platform takes actions to neutralize the carbon footprint of your life. And the three levels depend on the uh, lifestyle that you lead. Uh, for example, if you're an active traveler, uh, that means that the carbon footprint of your life is a little bit higher than compared to a professional whose uh, work is such that keeps uh, keeps them in one place. So the, the platform has a brilliant behavior smart way of synthesizing the work that they're doing on, uh, on your behalf uh, and sharing it in a way that makes it fun to follow progress and also to feel good. So what you see here on the screen, for example, is my profile and the summary of the impact that I've had uh, for the months uh, uh, since um, for the months that I've been a subscriber. One more example of how um, uh, it can be easy to, it, it, that, of, of how a business can make it easy for uh, clients to be responsible. The restaurant ordering platform, Cho Now, is, um, uh, has entered uh, into partnership with Instagram. And the way that it has translated or reorganized this, its offering is that it makes it possible for customers to order uh, from uh, restaurants based on uh, just on a click of, uh, of an attractive food item image that they have seen on uh, uh, on Instagram. So the Cho Now platform makes it easy to complete the, uh, the order uh, from an operational point of view, but from a, um, a customer experience point of view, it's become super easy uh, and instantaneous to order something that you like uh, visually. And the whole idea um, or the, the, the project is organized in a way that uh, uh, puts uh, or that uh, provides support to local restaurants and makes it easy and attractive to order from uh, local food providers rather than uh, from others. So, what does that mean for sustainability behavior? On one side, travelers will suffer from crisis fatigue and will reject any messaging that triggers worry and panic. Um, and this is something that uh, we often see as a mistake uh, in sustainability messages. So this means that we can no longer use negative or threat-related messages to seek to encourage responsible behavior. That said, travelers will still continue to have the deep care and the feel-good attitude towards being uh, responsible and towards being supportive of sustainability. So therefore, destinations and operators must find ways to make sustainable behavior easy to follow, weaved into um, uh, the, the design so that uh, travelers can benefit from uh, the feel-good response um, and uh, this can serve as uh, subtle reinforcement, uh, re reinforcement sorry, um, of sustainability as the social norm and the way that we do business and the way that we travel. The final uh, seventh point relates to the fact that uh, the stay home realities that have really helped many of us sharpen our culinary skills. And that, of course, will have a serious impact on the way that we view food and how um, we will seek to experience food in the future. Here's some evidence on how uh, some uh, providers, including in our own industry, are beginning to respond to that. Um, the, um, uh, this April, uh, the hotel chain, the popular hotel chain Double Tree, uh, which is part of the Hilton Group, uh, made public uh, the re recipe of its famous chocolate chip cookies, which uh, are presented to guests when they uh, come to the property. So this is sort of a welcome chocolate 
uh, chip cookie. Um, and uh, just to um, to demonstrate the popularity of this uh, uh, of this food item, um, data uh, that I came across is that over 30 million. Three zero million of these cookies are consumed every year. So it's something that uh, Double Tree uh, guests really appreciate and like. So in this time of crisis, uh, as a way to provide uh, quarantined families with uh, with a moment of comfort uh, and happiness uh, that comes with chocolate chip cookies, the brand has actually re uh, released its official recipe uh, and encouraged um, people uh, around the world to uh, bake them at home and try them at home. Um, another uh, great example comes from um, a vegetarian uh, fast food chain uh, from the US called Clover Food Lab. Um, and uh, this, uh, this food chain is especially popular in uh, Massachusetts. Uh, but uh, as every uh, food uh, food service provider, uh, they have suffered significantly from the loss of uh, any demand for their services. So what they have done is basically launched a YouTube channel uh, which live streams cooking shows every week, uh, every weekday. And uh, the way that they're designed actually helps their viewers, their customers to prepare some of their um, uh, favorite meals, as well as some basics such as bread, soup, brownies, um, and uh, so on. So what does all of that mean for the post-crisis traveler? First is that food and wine um, are gaining new level of importance as most travelers are sharpening their cooking skills and knowledge about wine, spices, cooking techniques and so on. So in that sense, travelers will value good food and will evaluate culinary experiences by higher standards. So it does create a, a, a different uh, level of uh, demand. In that sense, destinations and operators have an um, an excellent chance to stand out by connecting with travelers through food, uh, whether it's uh, and not only through the classical format um, of uh, service, uh, food service, uh, uh, for food services, but also through demonstrations of culinary traditions, uh, weaving in of local products, something that's important to this group, um, designing interactive activities around uh, uh, food and uh, culinary traditions. Okay. So um, I hope that uh, you enjoyed these insights and let's uh, look now how they link to the priorities that uh, we talked about uh, uh, earlier with, uh, with Ingrid. <clears throat> so um, first, uh, what I have uh, um, visualized here is how the uh, insights, the behavior insights that I shared with you uh, about the post-crisis traveler relate uh, to the priorities that uh, uh, you as a community have uh, identified. So, for example, uh, the expectation for new hygiene standards um, is associated with the opportunity to uh, build new uh, offerings and reinvent, innovate some of the offerings that we currently um, currently have. Social, uh, the desire to be social but without crowding uh, will probably trigger much fa much more favorable impact on nature because we will see less um, uh, impact from uh, large groups. Uh, and also this will create favorable opportunities for really developments in, uh, uh, in be beyond the traditional uh, seasons. Care as the new characteristics of uh, service uh, will make uh, demand for local uh, more, uh, more active. And the way that this will translate is that uh, uh, people will respond to demonstration that, for example, a local hotel uh, demonstrates care for local food providers and has made uh, local food the only uh, type of food that's offered on uh, the premises of the uh, their um, uh, of their property, similarly with strengthening uh, local identity. And again, uh, the opportunity to design new offerings around care or to recenter offerings around care um, is a way or is an opportunity for innovation and of course, uh, new sources of um, uh, profitability. 
Um, the focus on value, again, will uh, increase demand or could be uh, actually uh, linked to buying locally and local identity, the opportunity to experience something new, to learn something new, are value uh, elements that could be strengthened and that could be demonstrated. And again, the ability to uh, demonstrate value will be directly associated with uh, uh, profitability and the opportunity to innovate. Wellness gives opportunity to um, uh, design offerings that strengthen local identity and again, uh, that um, um, uh, focus on innovation and uh, uh, new opportunities for uh, uh, innovation. Similarly, uh, the increase, the new focus on sustainability uh, as a must have, but as something that's not difficult to do, it creates uh, opportunity for smart innovations and it also ultimately can lead to energy and uh, uh, resource efficiency. And food and the new focus uh, on food is, of course, related to strengthening local identity and, again, uh, gives endless opportunities for uh, reinvention and for um, um, uh, new um, sources of profit. So, as you see, the um, uh, insights about the post uh, um, post-crisis traveler are directly related to the priorities that this group has uh, um, identified. And so therefore there's fantastic opportunity to do some work now during these lower periods that will um, make it, uh, that would make the region more competitive and stronger on the other end of the crisis. And as I mentioned, this is not only something that is, uh, um, um, a good doing initiative. This is actually smart business. Uh, and the number that I share here with you, the data that I share here with you uh, are an indication of that. Uh, this is part of a big study that was done on the different uh, sustain attitudes towards sustainability and especially sustainability as related to the business and market activity and the balance between these that was done in different uh, um, regions around the world. And actually, you can see that for European residents, for European respondents, uh, accepting slower economic growth in order to, uh, at the ex expense of seeing, seeing stronger environment and sustainability uh, protection is actually something that's tolerated by uh, three-fourths of, uh, uh, of the respondents. And the reason why this is important is that the way that the market will change after the crisis uh, makes it very likely that for the foreseeable future, the main markets that uh, we will have are European. Because after the opening of domestic markets, regional markets, and especially within continent uh, uh, markets will be much stronger for a foreseeable future uh, before uh, really the global travel uh, restores its previous patterns. If um, it ever does. Uh, so in that sense, our customers will be the ones who expect that we'll place sustainability and environment protection at the core and that sometimes we would even make sacrifices um, on from a market perspective and business perspective in order to do that. So I hope this was not too long and uh, that uh, it was interesting and that offered um, uh, some interesting um, uh, insights and provoked uh, interesting reactions. Uh, what we suggest is that we take another uh, five minute break now. Uh, and uh, when we return, we will talk about the so what part or how all of this can translate to actions and uh, help us all move forward. Uh, thank you so much. Um, and uh, we will see you at uh, 11.23. Meanwhile, if you have questions and comments, please feel free to use the chat area. Thank you. We'll meet in five minutes then. Um, so that will be 11.23. And if you have any reflections or questions, please use the chat.
starting again, Milena? Yes, we can do that. Yeah, you did a marvelous job going through all this uh, insight. Thank in, you so much. Um, um, half an hour. So, um, uh, and as you all know, uh, of that and these that this this webinar will be recorded. So, uh, and we will show you afterwards how we will also continue working after the webinar. So uh, these are really interesting uh, findings combined with your sustainability issues. So I think uh, uh, this is something to go deeper into in the, the coming weeks. Um, there's a lot of possibilities in what mm -hmm. uh, Belena now uh, uh, showed us and, and shared with us. So I think we continue on now, um, Milena. Um, yes, absolutely. Everyone's back. Yeah, great. Yes, fantastic. Okay, so the idea here is that uh, the idea of sharing these insights was to demonstrate that not only uh, are our sustainability intentions uh, uh, a factor in uh, being uh, uh, good citizens and good members of our societies, but they also will be part of being business smart. So this is why we thought about uh, a design of the next steps that will help all of us move forward, uh, because we realize that especially the current uh, uh, chaotic situation makes it uh, sometimes difficult to focus um, on uh, these opportunities. So we looked at how we can help uh, all of us together move forward and uh, uh, really see togetherness in our uh, efforts. And the proposition is that we form three groups of participants around the, the interventions that uh, each has selected as priority. We have grouped them in uh, the priorities in pairs that are logically connected. And so you can uh, see them on the screen. Uh, group one uh, would include uh, uh, members of um, uh, this community that are interested in making uh, optimizations in uh, buying local and strengthening local identity. Group two will uh, bring together participants who are interested in um, improving uh, offerings uh, in a way that reduces impact on nature and that optimizes uh, resource and uh, energy efficiency. And group three um, is uh, going to bring together the participants that are interested in exploring uh, new season development, as well as uh, new sources of profitability and innovation. So what this means is that when you select the action that uh, you would like to work on, uh, you will join the group with others with similar ideas uh, and uh, together with our assistance uh, uh, with uh, uh, by Ingrid and myself, um, we will all together move forward. So just to give you um, a, a general idea of what will be the steps that we will follow uh, to execute each of these. Um, with the group uh, that we will pursue uh, strengthening of uh, local sourcing and uh, local identity, we'll first um, do a benchmark of the current situation and identify the aspects that we have an opportunity to, to change and the aims that we want to put. Um, then we will identify the targeted local products, offerings, um, uh, experiences uh, that we want to strengthen and make more visible. And we will study the interesting facts that can help us uh, strengthen their positioning and uh, add value. Remember, we talked about the importance of adding value and highlighting benefits. Then we will identify the journey moments of travelers, the touch points where we can make these uh, changes in order to strengthen the influences and the sense of value and the attractiveness of uh, the local. Uh, and then we will cr work together on creating the relevant content and place it where it will have uh, most impact. Ultimately, we would like to test and improve, but uh, that step and uh, the approach we take to that step will depend very much on where we are at in uh, in a couple of months uh, uh, and uh, whether it will be possible to test with real travelers or maybe we will do that um, uh, distantly. 
The second group will look at reducing impact on nature and energy resource efficiencies. And again, we will start with them by identifying areas we can make where we can make improvements and we'll benchmark the current sit uh, situation so that we know from where we are starting and what uh, results we will achieve. Then we will uh, look, depending on the desired areas of improvement, we will plan how we can optimize uh, the solutions. And of course, it will, mm, uh, it will matter as uh, these will be relevant uh, uh, depending on what are the selected uh, uh, areas um, that require improvement. Is it impact on nature? Is it maybe saving energy um, and so on? Then we will uh, plan the optimization tactics and execute um, the adjustments that will be necessary to itinerary design or the experience design. And again, depending on the situation, we'll find um, ways to test and improve uh, depending on uh, on feedback from the market. The third group will pursue strategic new season development and profitability innovation. Um, in this, uh, with this group, we will identify priority itineraries and experiences that we want to improve or to create. Uh, then we will scan current offerings and identify the areas that we need to change. We will together execute the change, whether it's going to be itinerary adjustment or other um, type of uh, adjustment. And then we will again test and improve depending on um, on the um, on the context and uh, what might be relevant at the time. So here I will transfer again to Ingrid, who will tell you a little bit more about how we will make this happen. Well, first, Milena, uh, I, I would like to, to, to go back to uh, the, the focus of today, where we said that uh, we would like to reuse uh, some of the knowledge from uh, before. And in fact, uh, you know, the, the things you answered on the survey, we have that uh, archive. So if, uh, if uh, you have forgotten, uh, we have a lot of good um, uh, good knowledge from before the corona crisis on what uh, what you said about ideas to to work on how to do it so we will we can go back in that as i showed you from the the, the first files that i went through and then with the new insight that milena uh, has talked about today and the combination here then uh, it will be easier to pick up some points to work with because uh, now is the time to to, to focus and, and be be uh, motivated by uh, getting going some steps uh, on this sustainability uh, path so um, as I said these uh, groups uh, where you, you will choose your group and we will work with you on this um, um, before summer but first i will uh, like to also emphasize that uh, we have spoken about sustainability that it's not less relevant it's even more relevant and and we've seen the consumer perspective and one other thing that we see now uh, here in norway and i suppose also in sweden and finland that some of these uh, tools are even more available for you uh, as destinations and companies now. Um, uh, for example, uh, the Eco Lighthouse um, certification that we have here in Norway uh, and a lot of tourism uh, companies uh, have been certi uh, have, have, uh, certificated and have they, you have thought about it and some of you are in the process but what they do now is that they uh, uh, have their courses also digital and very uh, short effective for example uh, this way there's a webinar the 5th of may there's a webinar the 26th of may and you will get work done and you will have a consultant and you have the possibility to get the certification before summer. So um, we will investigate also in Sweden and Finland if there are um, similar uh, offers now, but 
that's a really uh, good thing that this is more available and digital and if you have time don't hesitate just start with the certification uh, on the, the sustainability issues the second one is uh, building competence um, uh, the global sustainability uh, tourism council they uh, have now also made available a sustainability tourism training uh, for uh, individuals, but also for um, uh, groups. For example, now in Norway, Innovation Norway and the, 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 the destination that are working on the sustainable destination labels, they uh, have now been funded uh as a corona crisis um, action uh, from innovation norway and the state and everyone has now been offered to join and to build their competence on the uh gstc sustainable tourism training i don't know maybe that is something for uh for for uh, your regions or your uh, organization to see if you can uh, get a good deal and to go out and, and work on this uh, building competence. And for example, here you have a course from June to July, and this will uh, this is a, a good possibility to to uh, build up uh, the competence base. Um, and also um, a third example from Norway. Uh, we see now. Uh, you know, the, being on a webinar or digital meetings, everything, now it's everyone does it all, the, all day long. So uh, use these new channels also for debates, uh, like Vesterolm, um, close to Lofoten in northern Norway. They, have, uh, they are in the process of this uh, destination labeling um, uh, uh, um, program and they can't, cannot hold their normal workshops, meetings, so they uh, have now invited for a, a Facebook summit where they uh, have uh, small speeches, uh, conducting debates and work together uh, in these times on sustainability because that's a that's the area that uh, 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 a lot of people now see that after the corona crisis uh, we have the possibility to, to rise again uh, in a more sustainable uh, way uh, as Milena also uh, <clears throat> spoke about. So these are different um, possibilities to use your time uh, to, to to do the certification, to build your knowledge, and to uh, be a part of the uh, debate about more sustainable tourism. And what we would like to um, suggest for you um, uh, is that um, uh, the next steps on, on this um, sustainability work conducted by Visit Arctic Europe uh, is that um, first you you think about which group as uh, Milena suggested you would like now to focus on until summer of course you have your uh, um, priorities from the survey but maybe now with the new situation and the new uh, new uh, times, it's easier and more more motivating to choose one group and maybe one action point that you can execute before summer to be focused and uh, see that you can gain some results. So therefore, we have um, uh, made a, a small Facebook group. Uh, for us, for you who has attended now, for those who have attended the webinar one and two, and of course to invite also the other members of the Visit Arctic Europe community to have um, uh, a group 
to inspire, motivate and nudge each other on these issues. Uh, Milena, who has a lot of insight in the, 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 the customer and the consumer behavior, and I have uh, um, also um, insight in, in these systems and the labeling. And, and I work very close together with Innovation Norway for the Norwegian uh, companies and, and also will connect with the uh, Swedish and the Finnish um, organization to see what can be uh, done on the certification or competence and other things now. So we would like to have this group uh, together with you and for you also to share your uh, examples and, experience and experiences to motivate each other. And you know that the, the next uh, Visit Arctic Europe event, it's planned in June. It was actually planned in, in May, but it's proposed to, to, to June. I don't know if uh, if that will be live or digital, suppose digital because of the situation, but uh, until the 15th, we will have um, activities in with you in the Facebook group, and then we can uh, use that event as a milestone to see uh, how's the work going and discuss even other topics that you would like to go further into. And then, of course, as we saw in the last newsletter from Visit Arctic Europe, um, it's been prolonged, the, the project uh, period. So there will be opportunities to meet um, and to work more on these issues uh, together um, after this situation uh, is more normalized. But we have been um so trained now to work uh, digital so it's a lot of the work can be done and now uh we would um like to to uh, get your feedback on this um way of of, of working uh with the sustainability um, issues in a more short period now uh, together. So, um, um, you know, um, we can, um, we can uh, look at Churchill who said, never let a good crisis go to waste to inspire us. And we, we, we uh, believe that and we see that there's awareness on the importance of tourism and also uh, a faith that we can rebuild it in a more sustainable uh, way. So with that as a background, please uh, give us your thoughts, questions, reflection on the, um, the proposal we have given to you now on how we can work together on these issues. Thank you. Anna and Anna and Anuka, Cloris, Graham, Michael, Mina, you are still with us. Um, what do you think about this um, suggestion to choose uh, the focus, the group, to work together uh, in a Facebook group and to uh, meet again, either digital or, uh, or first digital, I guess, in June and, and, uh, and then further on uh, after summer. Can you give us some feedback on that? And on what maybe um, um, which group do you think will be um, interesting for you? work on are you are you around us here Mina is here
the end of the webinar, I will give you the link for the uh, Facebook group and we can continue there uh, with our uh, discussion. So, um, you, um, yeah, go back and, and, and uh, and discuss with your uh, your colleagues. Um, uh, Milena, as we discussed, uh, we we don't um, divide into three groups uh, in the first stage. It's just yes. to set you on the, on the, on the focus area. Absolutely. Will, yes. So we will we will uh, invite you all into the, the Facebook group. Facebook group. Yeah. And, and then we see how the, um, the interest is on the different groups. And maybe yes. it's good to share also uh, yeah. between the groups. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. Yeah. Good. Um, Anna from, um, from Holiday Village, are you still with us? Or uh, the other Anna? Maybe they are, uh, uh, yeah, Anna is there. Group two, yeah, from uh, Amma, mm -hmm. good. And um, anyone from Sweden uh, listening or Finland listening, who uh, do you have some examples on the certification? Uh, programs in your countries that are um, okay option yeah um, uh, we have the um, uh, Anuka you, you you ask if there is any option instead of a Facebook group because you don't use Facebook for work and we discussed it with Mike about the you have this base camp um, project um, um platform uh and we discussed what would be the easiest way to to communicate and there are uh, we landed on facebook because that is uh, easy for a lot of people because they are that's a platform where they are every day but i think that it would be possible to make a combination of that i will i will ask can find out how to do that with, with Michael uh, uh, later. So you will get information on, do you use the Basecamp platform, Anuka? Um. There is a bird singing. Is it outside your office, Milena? Yes, this is <laughs> this is me. <laughs> Spring is really here for me. <laughs> That's great. Um, my colleague uses yeah. Okay. Nina is also typing something about the um, uh, uh, Facebook work profile. Yeah. Yeah. 
So Mina suggests that it's possible to make a work profile uh, um, on Facebook and use that as a member of the, the group. So that could be uh, a good way to come around it. I will, yeah. Yeah, great, then we saw that. Um, I will, um, I, I don't, if you don't have any more reflections or questions, uh, we will round up, do you think so? Um, mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. And uh, we can share also uh, emails if people want to get in touch yes. and ask questions. I now um, type the the um, facebook group so if you just click on that uh, um, link and ask to be a member of the group i will uh um, um, milena and i are administrators so we will let you in and then uh, we will also um uh, send this out um, um, together with the link to the webinar and inviting other of the Visit Arctic Europe family to join us for working uh, on this everlasting story to um, gain a more sustainable, uh, sustainable tourism um, in the future. Um, so here you have our email um, addresses if you would like to also uh, give comments or ask for something um, directly. So please do that. So I would like from my side to, to thank you for uh, attending uh, the webinar and hopefully we um, uh, gave you some uh, uh, both motiva motivation and, and in inspiration and also the new knowledge on how to work on sustainability issues uh, to meet the future. So Milena, I will give over to you for the rounding up. Thank you so much. Um, I also want to express hope that uh, we were able to add value and uh, uh, make you see the opportunity rather than the challenge in the current situation. And of course, as uh, Ingrid said several times, we are uh, here to assist. And um, I cannot express the excitement that I have uh, for the opportunity to work with you and hopefully uh, support you in the endeavors. Thank you so much. Thank you.